If the assumptions are not met for analysis of variance, we can switch to the non-parametric alternative, which is the Kruskal-Wallis test, and this does not have all those assumptions um, about outliers and normality, because it's not testing the mean, it's testing the median in most cases. So the first three assumptions are the same as what we had for the other tests, just checking that we've got the right kind of data. This assumption four is about how we interpret the test, so we'll talk through that as we get up to it, but I do like this web page and it's worth having a read through, it gives some nice pictures. But what we would do first with any set of data is see if we meet the assumptions for ANOVA and then if we don't, we'd switch across to the non-parametric. So if I have a look now at the, um, the parity of the mothers, and that's the number of previous babies. Um, so I think parity can get defined a little bit differently depending on what time period and country you're in. I think at the moment it's any pregnancy that goes past 24 weeks, um, whether or not it's a live birth. So we'll just consider it to be the number of previous babies. So if we just look at parity by itself, oh, I did mean to cancel that, just to get a picture of it in our heads, we might just do a plain old, I meant to reset before, plain old histogram to have a look at parity. So parity is the type of variable where we would always expect it to be uh, not normal or skewed to the right and that's because you can't have fewer than zero babies. So most women are having zero, one, two, three babies and I don't know where this data set's from but we've got a fairly hefty proportion of women um, having a lot of babies and even up to, was that 13 or 14? So it would be interesting to know a bit more about where this data was from because that's a, that's a lot of kids. Um, so we can see already that this is not normal, but we will go through the process and have a look at the data the same way we did with the others. So the first thing I would look at would be the outliers, and I'll do a box plot for that again. So I'll drag parity in there and smoking status. Now I don't really think that smoking status is actually going to show any difference over parity. Um, I'm not sure that there's any link there but it just makes a handy um, demonstration. So we can see that we have a ton of outliers and in contrast to the baby weights where we had the outliers either side and the distributions were still looking fairly normal the outliers in this case are all on the right or upwards and the, the data is very skewed to the right. We could also do the histogram split by the groups and I'll go to the legacy dialogue and histogram, take out birth weight and put in parity, keep, make sure you keep your normal curve. And this is where we can see it's been chopped off at zero and that would be called truncated and then it's been pulling right out to the right hand side so it's really not following that normal distribution at all. We could also test for equal variances but I, I don't think there's any point here. So this would be the point where we might say it's really not looking normal. The mean is most likely going to be affected by all these outliers so perhaps that's not the best thing to test. Perhaps we should be testing the median as the middle of the data set. So when we move to the non-parametric test, because we're not assuming that the shape is normal, we actually do have to test that the shapes are the same across the groups first before we test the medians. So we're testing that the shape or the distribution is the same. If we go to analyze and non-parametrics, we do need to know what type of sample we've got, and in this case they're independent samples. Um, so related samples might be before and after measurements or or more where there's some kind of relationship between the groups. We've definitely got separate groups. We don't need to know what kind of test we're doing, as in the name of it, it will SPSS will pick that for us. So if we had two groups it would pick a man Whitney um, and because we've got more than two it'll pick the Kruskal Wallace, but it will tell us what it's doing. So the first thing we're doing is comparing the distributions across the groups comparing the shape. In fields we'll put in parity and then smoking status into our groups and then that's it, just click run. The output is very nice for the non-parametric test. It, it explicitly tells us the null hypothesis that parity is the same, that sorry the shape of the parity is the same. It tells us the test it's done. 
tells us the significance and it tells us what to do to retain the null hypothesis. If we want more information on this test, we can double click it um, and it gives us a few more details. We get this box plot, which we already did, so we probably don't need that again. Um, and then it says multiple comparisons are not performed because the overall test does not show significant differences across the samples. So because there is no difference, we don't need to do the multiple comparisons. If there was a difference, then we would need to look at that and we'd get a whole lot of extra tests down here. Now if the shape is the same, we could go ahead and also test the medians. And that's back in the same dialogue, non-parametric independent samples back to your objective and compare the medians. Uh, now you can do this even if the shapes are different but, but technically what you're testing is the mean ranks so it's getting a little bit technical here as to actually what's being tested and this might be beyond what you want to know about these tests. So perhaps consult with a statistician or do a bit more reading if you're interested Otherwise, you could, uh, if the distributions were very different, maybe you would just stop there and say the distributions are different, I'm not going to test anymore. Or you could run it um, and try to be aware that you may not be testing the medians exactly. In this case, we are because the distributions were the same. So the null hypothesis is that the medians of parity are the same. The null hypothesis is always that there is no difference between the groups. It tells us that it's done the independent samples median test. We've got a high p-value, so we've got no evidence against the null hypothesis and we will retain it. Again, if I bring this up here, we can see that it's put the overall median in blue and there's no particular difference here between the groups. If there had been, then it would have done some multiple comparisons and we would have been able to see that. In one of these it would pop up, it's probably not popping up the same. Uh, hmm. That will, I think that will give you another option if there's different, I might have to do that with another video. Um, but from here we can see that there is no difference in the median number of previous babies between the different groups um, of smoking.